All right, welcome guys uh, to our first, uh, to the pitching session, uh, the uh, time of the hour. Uh, we have our uh, lovely judges here. So let me quickly introduce all our judges. Uh, we have Amrit Kumar, who is the co-founder and president of uh, Zilika and also the co-chief investment officer for Zilika Capital. Nitin Gaur, who is director at IBM uh, Financial Services uh, and an uh, advisor to us who has been guiding us for the longest, for our entire journey. Uh, Richard Wang, who is partner at DFJ uh, Dragon Fund, and Pranav Sharma, who is the founding managing partner for Woodstock Fund. And we have Akshay Agarwal here back again, judging and, you know, uh, a co-founder of Blockument Studios. So uh, with this, uh, we will be starting with the pitches. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, these pitches are all, uh, you know, uh, keeping in mind being based on uh, building, build, are being built on Zilliqa. So you would have seen some of these ideas already in the crypto ecosystem, but they're not there in the Zilliqa ecosystem. So the participants are here to solve that. And they will be judged on four criteria, uh, And they will be uh, given a rating on 1 to 10. So let's see how uh, they, uh, you know, what the judges feel. And we can, once the pitches are done, we can always do a quick poll among the audience and see you know, what's going on. So our first uh, pitch for the day is Zil Wales. Uh, so we'll have Devendra and team come on stage. Hi, Devendra. Hi, Manav. Yes, you are ready? Yep, sharing. Perfect. Please share your screen. Judges, you can hear Devendra well? Fine? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Yes. Devendra, your time starts now. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are presenting our idea, Zill Wales, social trading platform for Zill. Over the last two years, the ecosystem has grown in leaps and bounds. The total number of transactions st stood at 4.6 million in Q1 2021. Similarly, the total number of addresses were at 1.5 million. The total USD logged in Zill is 1.2 billion. And all this has generated large number of users, which has resulted into number of wallets, number of exchanges. And these people who are coming on board are finding it hard when to invest, how to manage their investments. And that's the problem we are trying to solve. Then on top of it, whales move the market. And how do I get what trades whales are getting into? So this. There is a lack of information, notifications on trades, trends, trade opportunities, <clears throat> and what whales are doing and getting trade suggestions based on whale movements is what the problem we identified to be solved. Uniwales is the most strongest competitor and they provide alerts on trends, updates, trades, they also have their own coin. They have come up with a wallet and they provide robo advisor services as well now. There are other competitors as well. What services or features we thought for our application? Notifications to Telegram, social media on our own app. Then options to follow whales to get notifications on their trades and positions. Machine learning based tips for trades, taking, lending, borrowing based on these movements of whales as well as my own previous history and then enable transactions buy and sell based on these notifications so these are the key features of zill whales the usp is presenting trading opportunities based on whales trends individual wallet history and facilitate buy and sell trading in one single app the solution is Zill Wales, picking data from Zill Swap SDK, other exchanges, read my own wallets, generate trends, machine learning based insights, push notifications, follow whales, and machine learning based tips for trades, taking, lending, borrowing, and then enable transactions based on these 
notifications. And in future, we would love to develop our own wallet coin for ease of transactions. Stakeholders, exchanges, Zillswap wallet. This is the architecture from Zillswap SDK. We would pick the details, save it on our own server, and push it out as and when needed. The team, Anu, Vinay, and Devendra. We have got diversified experience. That completes our presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Judges, any questions? I, I, I have one not question, but more like a comment uh, per se. Yeah. So I've seen some products where uh, these are rule based trading where you preset. Uh, for example, if Bitcoin price goes up, uh, sell my asset, um, sell 5% of my assets that I hold in Zills, for example. Okay. You can imagine all sorts of rules that you can you can uh, build around that. Uh, is this something that the user has to do himself, or would you provide these sort of automated rule-based engine that people could basically... So we are proposing a machine learning-based model. So based on my previous trades, when I acted upon when I sold, when I bought. So our model should be able to predict and suggest that these are the standard set of rules. And these are few rules based on your previous trade history. So you can either simply say, okay, I want to do this. So say Zill drops by 10%, buy additional 1% stake. So based on those kind of history and data which we would be collecting, we can enable users to enable those kind of rules based. Uh, Correct. So, so just to quickly ask uh, Amrit, it's directly related to what you asked. So is this information from one particular user's habits or are you also collating data or planning to collate data across users so that, you know, let's say one of my trades or a particular pattern of trades got the best results, right? Best ROI. Is the idea to, you know, use the platform for that purpose? So we, what we are suggesting is based on my transaction history, if I see what kind of investor I am, am I aggressive? Am I moderate risk taker? Am I conservative? So based on those, we should be able to predict that, okay, this falls under your criteria this trade you should be taking this is the position you should be taking so that we can so if we can build that kind we would be collecting this data on a single user and their transactions over a period of time so if we build this kind of machine learning based and then there are standard models if uh, like fibonacci series model 22.3 percent dip or upswing and so on so we can build those standard models along with this machine learning based is a better indicative, in my opinion. It profiles my investment behavior. And based on that, if I can enable transactions, if I can give suggestions, and they can simply say, okay, execute. And the transaction is completed. Or even I can take their permissions to automate kind of robo-advisors, where I simply say, okay, this is the transaction which fits the criteria. And if you allow, I can buy up to say, 100 USD, 500 USD, thousand dollars. So based on those criteria, those kind of configurations, we can make. These are the finer. So from basic configuration, we can then develop into these kind of robo advisor, robo trading kind of platform. So, so the matter of this machine learning module is this tied into the token economic system? So, for example, you know when you when you use these blockchain networks as compute frameworks. Are you running this on your own servers? Are you tied, tying this to the Zilliqa's transaction platform? And how do you monetize this? Monetization would be, so once we were looking at some kind of transactions, we would be able to aggregate the transactions. So there we can get some kind of arbitrage rather than one-on-one -on -one transaction. If we aggregate the transactions, we send it in one bulk transaction, we would get some arbitrage opportunities. We would be doing some kind of promotions. We can do advertisements. We would have a verified user base, which you can then directly send 
new coins information we would have that kind of captive audience base and then we can always ask for premium services and subscriptions so this machine learning based model robo trading robo advisory these can be the premium services and maybe make an arbitrage isn't it like the you yourself are using the platform to do arbitrage or is it is it like people who are doing arbitrage you will take a cut out of that of their profit but it's too early to comment but my idea was if say i am doing so there would be one idea where they are saying we combine 10 or 100 transactions in one transaction so those 100 transactions typically burn less gas as compared to one individual ta- 100 individual transactions so something similar we can always do if there are 10 trades to be done i can always club these 10 trades into one single trade and save on gas so that oh, saving right. of gas i can always ask for yeah, a question is on arbitrage of the assets themselves because you own the platform you have insights um yes so that also we can and again we can always ask for some percentage from the money we are saving or making for the user also when you meant uh, facilitation of trade did you also mean uh, you know i could you know since it was social trading platform uh, at, at the first go did you you know it came to my mind could i also let's say if i follow nitin's investments could i also put like an auto replicate nitin's portfolio if he moves from one place to another can i also move uh, you know in that direction automatically so follow wells is what we are saying based on suggestions or notifications based on their trades and positions is what we are going to suggest so you can, would have a choice to so depending upon how we implement or develop this but we can always have that kind of auto trade rule where if say akshay moves or sell something i also do something similar in the similar percentage terms sure hi dr dr puria this is richard i just wanted uh, things you are doing a trading platform so what is your cost start strategy to attract more subscribers what was the last part of the question trading platform we are doing right and what is your marketing strategy to co start to have more subscribers so that would be word of mouth and ease of use to bring your trades on one single so right now if i have one exchange i am using for my trades i typically fail to get the wells movement in zill platform it is not there as of now zill ecosystem uniwells provide it for uniswap i get to see the notifications and the trades and so on for uniswap but for zill swap that's one value add if you are into zill ecosystem we would be able to provide you those notifications those movements of the whales so whales move the market if i as an individual investor get to see those movements i might be able to follow them or act on those notifications which might be relevant for me as an individual investor so that value addition which we are providing would be the best word of mouth kind of publicity for us to get as many subscribers <coughs> All right. Thank you, Devendra, and thank you, judges. This time is up. <clears throat> thank you, Devendra. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Our next uh, idea is profit, uh, which is sorry. One of the things. Sorry, I can't hear yeah. anyone. I can't hear uh, Devendra right now. All right. Uh, I muted myself. I'm going. I can hear everyone time. else, but uh, maybe it's a setting issue. Sure. Okay, uh, pr- uh, Prana, if you just refresh your screen, that might just help you, you know, okay. um, get back on that. All right. Uh, so till uh, then, we'll just have the uh, next team coming up. The next idea that is profit, which is DeFi-based real estate financing, and is being presented by Rahat.
Hello, Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Ra, you are audible. Hi, Manu. Okay. Hi, Ra. All right. Can you please share your screen? Yeah, I'm sharing. Uh, and by the way, it is a uh, profty, not profit. Prof. All right, profty. Sorry, my bad. Okay. So, is my screen visible? Yes, your screen is visible. And Arth, your time starts now. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the idea we are presenting is Prof T, that is DeFi based real estate financing. Uh, with a vision of simplified real estate transactions, our mission is to provide real estate investment opportunities to crypto holders and crypto based real estate buying and selling for everyone. With real estate, market is expected to grow up to $3,700 billion by 2025, mainly due to modifying of their operations to recover from COVID-19 impact and focus will be on tech savvy Gen Z. For DeFi, it is a $100 billion sector now with protocols like Compound and Aave and the NFT market with 1800% growth in 2021. The picture of real estate in blockchain is that Blockchain based real estate tokenization, sales, and renting is already there, but it is focused basically on bringing paperwork to blockchain or some real estate firms looking for crypto opportunities. But we also have crypto holders which are ready to act as in individual investors. So we propose a simple protocol uh, for crypto investment on real estate. Now, suppose Akshay wants to sell a property, he will list it uh, as an NFT uh, onto our platform. Say I want to buy this, then I will make some initial payment that is the down pay. This will result into the property getting locked onto our uh, contract and remaining amount uh, get, getting paid to Akshay through the contract and uh, I will be getting a token of possession to claim and use the property till I make the full payments as per my choice of regular intervals. After that, uh, the NFT will be transferred to me. Uh, the attraction of this model is that there is lower risk attached when uh, real estate is a collateral and it has a well-established interest model. Uh, buyers will be attracted uh, because of uh, the lower interest and transparency into claiming the real estate, sellers will get the faster uh, and tokenized transactions. Uh, here, uh, the investors will earn through interest in proportion to their inter uh, investment and we can earn through minting and listing of NFTs, transaction fees, fine and fees from investors. Uh, we need to keep track of non-payment of buyers and put some fine on it. And if continuous non-payment reaches 50% of the down pay, we can invalidate uh, token of possession of buyers and resale NFT. Uh, after settlement, we can uh, distribute the profit to investors. So uh, this is our scheme. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Raj. Judges, questions? I'm not, I'm not a lawyer or a compliance person myself, but would that require any licensing requirements? Uh, yes, uh, there will be uh, whatever are the government norms that we need to comply. Okay. And and second thing is, don't you in the whole equation that you showed, uh, you know, uh, Rath, uh, is um, where is the registry? Because in, even if you issue an NFT based on property, you'd be some participation cooperation in terms of the actual registration of the asset. Uh, or, you know, so is there, which is the hardest part of many of these things, because these are quasi government or government entities who may not be exactly blockchain savvy or, or deal with it. And so in the US, of course, there are some companies who are providing that service as a traditional service as a part of being on blockchain network. So any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, uh, we have a detailed thought about that and that was the major concern. Uh, so yeah. uh, uh, what I can say is that uh, the system will work only when it is uh, back integrated with the uh, existing system of uh, the blockchain uh, tokenization of real estates. Yeah. 
And one thing on business model, um, your investors, generally real estate, there is an appreciation factor. There is, so, so interest is something which is an interesting term to use there. I just want to understand, is, is there a tie into the token economic system of whether it's NFTs and are you planning to have NFTs and fungible tokens as a change mechanism on the same platform? Uh, uh, real estate can be represented as NFTs and for payments, uh, we have to go with the fungible tokens. Okay. Sure, also, yeah, Nitin, please, please. All right. Yeah, please Richard, go ahead, Richard. Richard. Richard, please ask your question. Yes, I'm sorry. This is Richard. So uh, I, I think it's not just the NFT, right? I think it's more as well the security token. So I, I think it really depends on regulation. We we uh, studied the regulation for security token uh, a couple of years ago. It really depends on the, uh, the the company's policy. So I don't know. Do you have any idea about the, the current or uh, any regulation in India to to regulate this this uh, this market? Uh, right now, uh, the regulatory terms basically from the government of India is the RBI sets the upper limit for the interest on the uh, this uh, uh, whatever banks provide you uh, the interest rate. So that is regulated by RBIs. And uh, what you say, uh, whatever are the registries, it is very complicated in India. That all I can say, what the registry process is there, everything is there. They are very complicated. Okay. And, and, and Raj, you know, besides the compliance of the legal aspects which you have picked out, uh, my question is how do you create a market for a product like this by getting, you know, real estate on board, which is actually fungible and uh, which is actually, you know, I mean, which has a reasonable price and you are able to value it appropriately? Uh, see, uh, for creating the market, if you see uh, the basic model of how the blockchain is, it is because of the uh, uh, low investment in terms of uh, the entire system. For banks, they need to comply with the various, um, uh, what you say, uh, their uh, payment to the staff, their infrastructure, and a lot of other things. That in includes into the, uh, the interest rate. So we can bring down that interest rate and that can attract the investors uh, so to the buyers, sorry. And uh, with the real estate, if it is uh, getting locked onto our uh, contract, uh, that is something we are having in our possession. So means that will be a lower risk. But I don't think you, I you mean, can reduce interest rates on the fly. I mean, these are economic systems that rely upon the money supply and what interest rate is set by by the market, uh, I don't think you as a platform owner can have the flexibility of just reducing the interest rates to your convenience. Uh, uh, we can uh, lower it down the way banks do it. I uh, means uh, they uh, at least have some uh, fractional differences between uh, 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 their interest rate to attract the customers. So we can put a bit lower than them. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Q&A time is over, judges. Thank you, Rahat. Thank you, Rahat. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. So our next idea is a uh, community insurance, which is being presented uh, by Guru. All right. Hello, everyone. Hi, Guru. Can you please share your screen? Sure. Hope you can see my screen. Uh, not yet, good. Not yet. Ma Ma Mano, do you see my screen? No, Guru, we don't. Are you doing a screen share or a PDF share?
Uh, no, no, sorry. I'm um, issues, uh, network issues, I believe. Uh, that's okay. Uh, why don't you refresh it, Guru, and we can have you back uh, while we can move on to the next present presenter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll come back to uh, Guru's idea. Uh, the next one is Zakers, and we have Mushtaq here presenting this idea. I'm hello, everyone. hello. Hi. Whatever time zone you all are at, hello, and good evening to folks for joining us from India. Uh, Manav, I don't think I can share the screen because there's already someone else sharing. Uh, no, you can now try doing it. Uh, I still see that only one person can share a screen at a given time. But mm -hmm. uh, not sure who is sharing the screen. Is judges uh, taken up the screen? <laughs> not letting the presenters. You don't have your superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> the button is not enabled on my end. Probably that was the same issue. Uh, uh, all right. I am not sure uh, what's the issue. Like, this is new for me also. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Marav, maybe, Marav, maybe we could just bring back Raha and then she could uh, unshare her screen if that's an option at all because I think the last person was her. Could be. Raj, can we have you again and see how can that happen? <laughs> <laughs> or she also might the, uh, the progression of this event. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> we, 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 this is, this is a real demand of service. Someone <laughs> is denying service now. <laughs> that was oh, my share button is also disabled. Right. Share button, everyone share button is disabled. <laughs> Even my share button is disabled. Showing screen share by Guru. All right. Yeah, yeah, screen yeah. Shared by, yeah, yeah, I think so. Guru needs to come back on stage. <laughs> Thank you, Rahat. Guru, we need to have you again. Uh, because <laughs> Taha is saying that it's saying that screen is shared by you. <laughs> Issue centralized uh, platforms, have I tell you. <laughs> Maybe there's a lag. I am not sharing anything, to be honest. I mean, you want me to try share again? It's yeah. back. Uh, it's yeah. back. It's back. Now, Guru, I think so. you can share your screen and try. Okay. I think Guru was the root cause. We've asked him <laughs> <to move> again. <laughs> <laughs> Even Ahmed wanted Guru only to present. OK, now we're good. Nitin, that is, that is one way of beating the competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Guru. So are you ready? Yeah. Perfect. Your time starts now. <clears throat> Thanks, everyone. Um, our idea is community insurance. We wanted to bring insurance, group insurance privileges to retail crypto customers. The simple problem that we wanted to resolve uh, uh, through this solution is uh, currently for retail consumers, uh, the insurance is quite costly. And, and it is costly because of uh, uh, the excessive operational expenses in, in terms of marketing, in terms of um, advertisement, as well as the commissions that goes to agents. So our solution here is to offer a digital marketplace where these retail consumers become a community around insurance product. So if you are able to form the community, then we will be able to give an instant target audience to insurance providers uh, that will reduce the operational cost as well as uh, the cost of insurance can go down. So our solution is to offer this community feature uh, for the digital marketplace. So the impact we wanted to bring in uh, is essentially break the monopoly um, as well as increase trust because most of us take the insurance but we are not very sure the, the policy is right for me, right? So we go with community as well as uh, faster transactions and faster settlements. How this marketplace work? Just like any other marketplace, uh, we start with offers listing, uh, but with a small twist, our offers come with a goal. 
the goal is something like uh, we are ready to uh, provide say 25% off if a minimum of say 100 users 100 target users so during this offer period um, the interested uh, end users can actually go through the offer and if they are interested they can actually subscribe to the offer by staking sales we want only serious buyers so we want uh, a bit of staking sales so once this offer period is over then the smart contract actually evaluates whether the goal is met or it is not met. If the goal is met, we will just let the insurance provider take it forward. If it is not met, then we instantly refund the sales. So this is how the marketplace uh, is going to work. The business model. Of course, we look for a long-term um, um, uh, outcome of this, but in a short term, uh, product listing fee as well as a bit of a uh, small portion of business outcome could be uh, our money making area but on a long term we want to build communities we wanted to actually acquire critical data assets around this ecosystem and as well as build the ecosystems ancillary ecosystems around these uh, products this is our awesome team and our mentors i think we lost your screen guru Oh, you can see the screen now? Not yet. No, we can't. Oh. So, okay. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which screen was there. Uh, is it this? No, is this, it is, this is right. Okay, so this is our team uh, and our mentors. And a quick demo, um, a very initial stage of the MVP. Uh, we actually have a video to demonstrate, but because of the bandwidth, I think I'll just go through the screenshots. So this is uh, something like a simple landing screen um, uh, which is integrated to Zilpay and uh, a facility to browse the offers. Uh, this is what the offers which are currently available. Um, and, and if I'm interested in a specific offer, I can go inside and then look for the details, but uh, I can also look at uh, what, what community is doing, how many comments, etc. But um, if I'm really interested, I can actually go and subscribe uh, by paying uh, whatever the minimum deals uh, that are as a security. And once I paid, um, my subscription will be uh, uh, registered in the, in, the, uh, in the smart contract. And once um, that, that subscription period is over, smart contract will take it further. That's the idea. So I have one question, Guru. Um, this is something which I would imagine Amrit would be interested in as well. Insurance is a, is a very regulated space. Um, so there's a whole requirement for capital adequacy. Um, are you simply creating a marketplace and then handing off that to the insurance sort of underwriters? Or uh, that's correct. That's correct, Nitin, uh, because that's a regulated one um, and, and we don't want to get into that legal aspect. So essentially it is for the consumers, uh, forming the communities and, and, and drive the decisions by the communities. But once uh, the offer is finalized, uh, we will actually take it to offline, uh, let the insurance provider manage the show. Okay, so is, is the insurance providers involved in their offer, offering step? Uh, step? Yes. Or, yes. Okay. The, the okay. offers are actually coming from the insurance providers. To, to continue with Nitin's uh, sort of a question, uh, it feel it felt to me like it's more of a, it's not an insurance product built on a built on a blockchain, but it's more like a marketing tool to engage with your community. Am, am I right, or am I completely going tangential? No, you are absolutely right. Uh, this is not an insurance product. Uh, that is our aspiration to actually build a community, uh, a community uh, funded insurance at a later stage. But this is purely a digital marketplace uh, to build the community so that instead of retail uh, investor, uh, sorry, retail consumers and, and uh, insurance providers talking to each other, here we are going to form a community and we go as a group with the higher bargaining power with a better knowledge, uh, the community knowledge, we go and then try to get uh, a better offers from the service providers. The reason, the reason why I was asking this because it felt like if you replace insurance by something else, it would still work. 
uh, it should still work. I mean, it should ideally go to any financial uh, instruments, ideally. But, but we want to target initially with insurance and that too on the blockchain because uh, that is where the transparency is lacking right now. And uh, by, by providing a bit of um, uh, uh, claim settlements on the blockchain, uh, we would like to actually uh, build a good recommender system or uh, review systems uh, for the insurance products uh, where transparency is really needed. I mean, we all take insurance just so in our bad time it should work. So this is where we need a transparency. Yeah. But group insurance offer the same thing. And um, your, so one question I have is on, on you know, how do you make money from this? Uh, initially, with the listing fees, um, the insurance providers will pay us a bit of listing fees. Uh, but uh, normally, like if you if you are giving, say, for example, one insurance product, uh, the deal is finalized. Say, 500 uh, customers have opted for it. There could be say one percent of the total business that insurance provider gets. Uh, uh, that is earned as a uh, as a commission fee. Thanks. So, so what are you competing with? The uh, was a dot com in a way, right? Uh, they are still centralized, uh, but this is going to be mostly a decentralized uh, approach for policy budget. And you know, my question would be then: Do you actually require decentralization? Because technically, your policies are still discounted, normal group insurance. You know, in many ways, these are not customized product, as you know, Nitin was you know hinting at that adequate you know capital adequacy, risk reinsurance covers at the back end. So these are not customized products. These are like standard life insurance products, which Excellent. you know you are basically. Wholesale uh, discount from the insurers, right? Yeah, but, but Prano, uh, the actual problem here is if, if I'm in the market today as a retail customer uh, trying to look for a, 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 a life insurance, for example, right? So I'm not very sure. Uh, I just go with their claim settlement ratio, which is 93%, 95%, and I really don't know uh, how genuine they are. Yeah. Whereas here, it's community driven and, and uh, the settlements are going to be through community uh, on the blockchain. So that's where we can start building a kind of review system and a recommending system. So this is for us, for, for the end users to, to really uh, go with the genuine products. And just a, one more follow-up question you know, before I think maybe Richard can you know uh, jump in. My question is, you're mentioning about a recommendation engine. So when you're saying community, does it mean you'll be building a reputation system? Uh, yes, that's our long-term goal, actually. Once we start getting uh, the community built up and then uh, the, the, the transactions pass through our system, the critical data assets that I was talking about, through which we can actually start building the, the, the recommender systems, and review systems, and these things. So that's the answer, uh, the, the ecosystem we wanted to be. Sorry. And sorry, one little question. So what has been your progress so far in terms of building the actual system or you know reaching out to insurers and building a customized, you know, customized offering? Um, very little, to be honest, Prana. Um, uh, we started with the web app, trying to understand the Zilliqa uh, transactions and then how we interact with stuff. And we started looking at how uh, the, uh, uh, the basically like what sort of documents, etc., we can store on cloud, what are confidential, etc. So uh, thinking is around that. But once we have a bit of stable running MVP, uh, we should be able to start talking to uh, insurance providers and, and get their feeling. Any other questions, judges? Well, um, this is Richard. I, I, I don't have a question, but I do have comment because it's, it, it seems to me it's a simple using the uh, tokenomics to uh, to do this marketing product. So I do like to see if the, this, this team are able to really using the blockchain technology to to extend the insurance industry, not just using the, uh, the tokenomics to uh, issue the product. That's it. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Just a quick question, uh, uh, Guru. Is it in any way related to kitties, right? So I mean, there are business kitties, or you know, where people pull in money, and you know, there is one, uh, one, uh, let's say, business that takes away, you know, at a particular time, right? Do you think this relates to uh, that model in any way? Uh, to be honest, I'm not very sure, Akshay. The, the intent here is to actually form communities uh, around the products um, so that um, uh, things are become more transparent. And, and uh, rather than uh, with the limited knowledge of insurance, I struggling myself to figure out what is best term policy for me. Uh, I probably trust community and see, uh, oh, can I get a better fit? Yeah.
All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Guru. Uh, let's move on to our next uh, you know, pitch. Uh, the next is Zakas. Uh, which is being presented by Mushtaq. Now I am sure he will be able to uh, share his screen. Yes, definitely. Yes. Awesome. Hello. So Mushtaq, you're ready? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, Mustaq, your screen is uh, visible and your time starts now. Right. Hello again. Welcome to the world of Zackers. Now, what does Zackers? Zackers is a platform. It's a perfect amalgamation of the three entities what you see on the screen. It uses Zilliqa as a platform to connect content creators with people who would like to sponsor the content creator's work. Using my idea, I believe I have the potential to put Patreon out of business. For people who don't know what Patreon is, Patreon is an existing popular uh, platform which is based on the same principle as mine, right? And I say that this idea has a potential to transform the creator economy as we know today. Let's look at the problems we're facing today. So at this point of time, there are three main problems with Patreon. First is Patreon is a centralized system. And then the second one is that it has various groups of fee structures, right? And they are usually between six to 12%. So on an average, they have a high fee of 10%. And the third one is confined space. Content creators income depend on a single platform. So in case Patreon move, goes out of business tomorrow, people would have to, you know, seek other alternatives. Let's meet Alice. He creates young, he creates fantastic tutorials for young kids. He loves using Patreon, but he fears that he's losing a lot of, uh, you know, revenue, additional revenue after the commission cuts on Patreon. Can we do something better? Definitely. So the solution is to build a decentralized platform using the ZRC1 tokens, which are the NFT based tokens on Zilliqa. Why now? So the year 2021 has been the year of NFTs. And according to a CNBC report, in April alone, the quarterly sales of NFT crossed 2 billion US dollars. Let's look at the solution in a more detailed way. So as a creator, what I can do is, you know, I can have access to time-based NFTs on my platform. And I can create different levels of NFTs, like you see on the screen. And as a follower, what I can do is I can gain access to the marketplace and gain benefits on the type of NFTs I own or the number of NFTs I own, right? And this would give me access to, you know, the early benefits or exclusive uploads, etc. Let's look at the overview of the technical architecture. On this diagram, what you see are three important components. The first one is the application itself. And then we have the Zilliqa blockchain. And the third one, we have an external component, which is the IPFS node. And in the next slide, I will go through how you know a user story takes place. A content creator, for example, when he's trying to upload something on our platform, we send that data to the IPFS node and we retrieve the content ID. Using this content ID, we are just locking it into the NFT contract. So that is the overview, right? And business model. So our business model is to take a low, teeny tiny 3% commission on every transaction made by the creators. By doing this, Alice is now happy and satisfied with his extra revenue. That's it from my end. Open for questions. Hey, Mushtaq. Good, clear, concise presentation. So thank you for that. Um, Quick question, if you, instead of using IPFS, I'm just wondering uh, why not tie into the token economic system of Zilliqa itself for file storage? Uh, token economic systems for Zilliqa, you mean? No, 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 what I'm saying is instead of using IPFS, which right, is right. 
define a file system for right. bickery of, of storage mechanism. Why yeah. not tie into a file storage mechanism on Zilliqa itself? Because now you're fueling that ecosystem that you're working on NFTs, but you also are fueling the non you know the uh, the distributed storage on the same platform, and that way yeah. you can utilize the economies of scale of the same token. That's an interesting perspective. I never thought about it in that direction. Honestly, I wasn't even aware that uh, I could you know channelize my thoughts towards there. But now that you mention it. It'll give me an idea to think about from here on. I, I did not think this through. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't really thought about that. Mustaq, I had, I had one quick question. So um, sure. if, if I'm a creator, I come in and then um, yeah. as my followers on the platform grow, I will have to keep minting new tokens, right? Or, or I don't have to. I have to. So, right. So it's an interesting point. So. At this point of time in Zilliqa, right, they don't have something similar to ERC-1155 multi-tokens, if I'm not wrong. Right. right, Amrit? So once we have that, that will incentivize more products like mine. Because you only using one NFT, and then you call multiple tokens, and then you can have various opportunities in the same idea. And then you can get social tokens as well in the future prospects. So. To answer your question, once the user takes the, I mean, goes to the platform, he has to, at this point, it's just one uh, content, one uh, NFT, right? So at this time, it's just a single thing. Got it. It's not a multi token. In terms of uh, people, let's say, who want to buy those NFTs, what's, why, why would I, I mean, I'm talking about the secondary market. Uh, so if, let's say, if I want to follow a content creator, do I have to buy his NFT directly from the primary? sort of um, issuance or, or I have to buy from someone who's already a follower of, of this content creator and wants to come out of the system. Great. That is a future add-on to the application. What you mentioned is the secondary market. So the secondary market can be accessed from some, I mean, the NFT can be accessed from the person who already has the NFT, right? And then we can sort of uh, have another uh, user story wherein I, as the owner of some content creator's NFT, I have a marketplace for me to sell it to someone else. And uh, at this point, no, we have we don't. That is a future addition. Got it. I think just a quick remark, uh, Mushtaq, you know, so yes. I've been following some investments done from YC, and I think in India, they have something, invested in something called as a buy me a coffee, right? Okay. It's exactly. Uh, something like this, but working in the centralized environment. And because that was an investment, I also went on to see how it works. Uh, feels like something that I would use. I think one challenge was that I also got reach out from another team called Super Page, right? That's also an Indian team. So they, you know, I think the model might work in terms of incentivization because YC is investing and it has done a bunch of investments across the globe. But also, there must be considerable amount of uh, competition because Superpage does exactly what Buy Me a Coffee does, which is you know very similar to what Patreon is doing. And now you're also planning a step in the direction. Definitely, decentralization is adding an add-on. Um, so different audience at first, but at the same time solving the same problem. Yeah, that is certainly the case. And uh, Patreon is just one which hits everyone's mind. That is the most popular one. There are many other uh, platforms which are based on the same principle. However, decentralization is not really, uh, you know, taken into consideration today. So by doing decentralized version of the same idea, I think it will benefit a lot, removing the middleman. Right. Uh, Master, this is Richard. Yeah. So uh, it looks like you are doing a marketplace for NFT product, right? Marketplace for yeah. NFT product. So I just have a simple question. What would be the... Uh, Except that, that you build um, based on the Zika, what would be the other differentiation from, like, say, Maker's Place, like, say, the MF NFT platform based on either based on Tezos or Polygon or even BSC? Right. So, whatever platforms you mentioned, I don't know the depths of it. However, I would like to comment that uh, the idea is different in a way where we have time based NFTs, right? We have a weekly based NFT, for example, and then you have a monthly based NFTs. So once the time period is done, 
you you do you do not have access to the nft right because you've only paid for that particular duration and uh, at this point of time the other platforms what you mentioned not to my knowledge i i, I don't really think they have this feature right yeah then so that not the tezos one for sure palament does not have it because i'm also following that hmm what's that richard you were saying something yeah richard please go ahead sorry so uh musa kare before richard you know jumps back in uh my yes. question was that you know what is the low hanging fruit in terms of uh, customer acquisition for you especially since you know you want to compete with patreon and you know various others that akshay also mentioned uh, the conventional ones yes, yes. uh it's a tough uh, market to get into but as soon as people start noticing the difference when they see how much money they can save rather than taking the huge pay cut you know it's interesting so the patreon i was just checking today i didn't know this since a long time they have four different categories of fee payments uh, platform fees payment fees and then pay out fees and then conversion fees which is like a huge uh, that's their whole business model right and once people start noticing that a small amount of money saved will go uh, in a long time for them i'm pretty sure uh, people will shift their mindset towards decentralization also pranav i think just to that point i think uh, you know just by serving the as uh, the liquor ecosystem that's a low hanging fruit right in terms of getting a major audience onto uh, the platform right well. yeah low low transaction fees was like i like i like this idea you mentioned this i like this idea of you know people are often talking about dynamic nfts so nfts which are not static what you're basically proposing again this is just a part of the bigger piece that you're discussing or presenting but i like the idea that you are basically saying that you have a subscription as an nft and that subscription yeah. period is basically tied yeah. with an nft so if let's say i bought my nft and i have a subscription for let's say a month and let's say for for some reasons i don't like it i want to give it up i could actually trade it for someone else who wants to come on board and you provide a platform a marketplace for people to do that currently right. it's 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 not possible just if you look at just a subscription market from that sense it's currently not possible right that is true oh i'm sorry was that a question or sort no, of no just a, just a comment and an appreciation oh. of <laughs> I got it. You are saying you don't need to answer any more questions. I think so, Mustaq. <laughs> Ooh, thank God. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mustaq. Thank you so much uh, for your coming, please. So our uh, next idea is Zil Flash, and we have Emad who is coming to present. Right. Okay, there has been an issue, Ahmed. Uh, you will have to again raise your hand. He doesn't want to tell anyone the scheme. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to uh, tell anyone the scheme. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So, uh, are you able to hear me properly? Yes, Ahmed, we are able to hear you properly. Actually, I'm worried about your questions. Actually, my heart is beating too fast now. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell you. Don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you I, can I, okay so let me share my screen first and can you see my screen yes i might we can uh, see your screen okay so you can see my ppt as well right exactly we can see your ppt also so right. hello everyone and hello creators and judges so our product is zil flash you just provide the address hash and we'll transfer the zil in flash before i explain my product let me explain you what's the problem here consider an example if i want to marry oh sorry i am already married i mean if i want to send zil to my girlfriend mary i just need a wallet address as it's only one address i can send the zil easily there is no issue it becomes a issue when there are a lot of wallet addresses where i need to send zil one by one there is no way to send the zil to multiple address at once as of now to understand this problem better let me tell you a short story of this 100 days of program here we used to get zil as a reward as a developer of a week or a developer of a month there were multiple students who were getting this i was a common one though mana was in charge of sending zil to all of us 
by asking our wallet addresses as there were multiple wallet addresses and multiple students and the amount of zil which needs to be transferred to them was also different it was a painful job for mano i i i am very uh, what you can say i am very excited for mano and not only it was a painful it was a time consuming job as well consider if mano send a zil to a wrong address or a wrong amount by mistake it can't be reverted as it's a blockchain mano would be like khaya piya kuch nahi glass thoda barana and english hindi to english translation uh, for uh, richard as well also okay a drink nothing but paying for a broken glass so now you understand the problem sending zil to multiple address at once was not possible till now our solution zil flash with zil flash you can send a zil to multiple address at once you just need to pass a csv file which will have an address and the amount of zil against that address you just upload the csv and you are done usp of our product is you can transfer zil to multiple address at one go without any human errors you are saving time and compute which is a major major benefit and the major 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 benefit is you can save up to 15% of your gas than a traditional one to one transfer so that's our product i will not just talk through i will show you a demo and a walk through so let's see a demo first let me know if you can see my web browser or no can you see my yes. web browser yes so you can see this is our ui where all the tokens and the amount will be listed i will just upload the csv file and csv file look like this where we have an address and the amount of zil which needs to be sent okay i click a choose file and i do a upload you can see the number of addresses and the token has been listed so you can also verify the total wallet address is 104 and the total tokens consider is 63.8 when i do send it will go to a zil pay wallet and will show the amount as well also there okay i just need to confirm it and done now it has been triggered in a zil pay wallet and it has been transferred to a uh, blockchain now once this it will take some some time to complete till the time let me inter introduce let me introduce you to my wonderful team who has built this product that is nachiket dharmik who is very religious as the name suggests he developed our smart contract and the another one mayur marvel he is fast like flash so he he named the product flash he developed our front end i am ahmed ghaziani not an ambani but still thinking what i developed okay so let us go again back to a product and see if the transaction has been triggered or not let me go to view block is still in the progress just give me a so uh, i think we're at the point of this uh, amad oh, as always very entertaining and uh, yeah, it's all very interactive so i think it's oh that's good okay yeah it's triggered you can see it has been transferred to all of the addresses which were present and it has been charged 8.5 zil and in a traditional transfer you get charged about 10 zil to of 100 address about 100 address so you are saving 15% of gas fees here okay so uh, thank you so we are trying to build a zilika ecosystem better bigger so i am ready for questions Yeah, just a quick question. Isn't this traditional sort of batch processing where you're certainly serving the gas fee because you're batching these processes and putting them in a block and 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 so that's something which is well done in art. I think you're making the UI a lot simpler. Yes. Second thing is error handling, uh, double spend, the traditional blockchain esque problems that you may put them in block and while these are, what happens to those transactions and are you letting the infrastructure handle those? No, so yeah so because it is uh, the the double double spend will not come because it is uh, doing transaction in, on a basis of a smart contract right on the back end on the zilika ecosystem and zilika uh, blockchain uh, programming language shila is actually safe and very safe language which is also reviewed by uh, blockchain peers okay so i don't think so there would be an issue for that so i'm just talking about the fact that you uploading a csv file there's a human error there right that you may end up 
making a mistake. So the error handling of those things. But I think in many cases, this is essentially just batch handling, batch processing. Yes. It's doing about it. Okay. No, that's good. Uh, and again, thanks for all the entertainment, Ahmed. Okay. Always good with that. Okay. I have, I have a quick question. Thank you very much for this very entertaining talk. I think from the first second you started, I think everyone was enjoying your talk. So okay. Thank you for that. Um, my, uh, yeah. Um, one question that I have is uh, obviously there are limits to how far we can stretch, right? So um, um, I'm curious again from a technical perspective. I'm curious to know what did you observe? How far you can stretch in terms of how big? Yes. Uh, it, it can go to up, it can go up to 600 data sets of now. Okay. Okay, and when we tried to do with the message, okay, it was consuming more gas fees. So we tried a hash list, okay, list hash, okay, yeah. which is getting a, so it's a benefit, right? You are already, we are at Zilliqa ecosystem, we are having a less gas, and our platform is showing, uh, pro providing more savings. And it is ready for live. After this presentation, we will uh, tweet about it. Got it. Just, just so that you know, I mean, long time back, uh, someone uh, developed a you know a solution like this, but without a UI. So it was a command line tool where you could pass okay. uh, um, a file in the same format as you're proposing. Right. right. I, I, I like it. I think it's a handy tool. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I would want to use it because, yeah. and I'm sure Pana and Akshay, Akshay must have needed so a tool like this. Yeah. So I, I especially ask uh, thanks to Mano and Akshay. He needs a raise. Especially in the next bull run, <laughs> bull run also you can do that. <laughs> but Lenny, how do you make money from this? Uh, okay, okay. So uh, as part of revenue model, what we are considering as we are saving 15% of your fees, zil fees, we can charge 3% from that basically. Or in, in place of that 3%, we can create a ZRC2 token and provide that flash, flash token and give it to them. And it can be traded on the market. So here we are uh, doing this. We are uh, working on this. And basically right now, we are very focused to create a value. Money just find a way to flow. Money will find a way to flow. As you know, Akshay and Mano also started with the community base, right? And now money money is flowing. I am seeing from the last three years. <laughs> he is revealing all secrets. <laughs> okay. But, but you know, I'm a good presentation. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. And Emma, you know, just a related question there. Uh, so uh, I think as you know, uh, Amrit and uh, Inavi and Nitin are also commenting that this is a great tool. Uh, how, so how do you envelop this uh, in terms of building this into a great startup or let's say a great business model? Let's say, are you going to be targeting a B2B or B2C in terms of, uh, let's say, payment industry or uh, okay. uh, what see, is your goal? But I know, why not both? See, like, if, if, if you I, I consider an example, I know you also know about the product uh, name like uh, BlackBerry, right? He was targeting a customer who is corporate, right? Right now, you can see where BlackBerry is, nowhere. If you see Android, he targeted small customer first. And then now, corporate also targeting him. So it's like start slow and go bigger then. Develop your product just, for corporate. Just, just on a serious note, I think if I generalize this, I studied a couple of HR management, uh, payroll management systems. I think that's where you know an immediate uh, recurring revenue could come from. Right, so big pay is one of the examples in that direction. Uh, that's obviously in the Bitcoin ecosystem. If you look at um, there is there is another investment by Consensus Ventures. I think it's called Parcel. That's also in in a similar direction. Uh, obviously built on top of Ethereum. So I mean, uh, you know, you could also take some inspiration. Yes, and uh, with it's not Zill. We are trying to make sure we can add more token as well. And if someone is trying to send a zil to someone or uh, someone is trying to uh, pay a salary to its employees, they will not uh, looking for a uh, fluctuation, right? So what we can do, he can pass on a zil to us. We can make sure we can uh, transfer that to in uh, what do you say, stable coins in the back end, convert that to stable coin. And so customer is also his uh, employee is also happy and he is also happy. Okay. So we are looking at the future perspective. One last question. Are you are you striking a deal with Manav on your product? <laughs> no. As of now, not. But I would like to strike a deal with Ziliga, I think. <laughs> OK. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Amrit. OK. Just share your tweet. Uh, share, uh, share our tweet, Amrit, after this. OK? OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. 
our next i just uh, love manav just one comment i just love how uh, you know i think i think he is bang on with what he wants about and, and he just knows how to take it i think uh, the tweet with amrit i think he's just earned it uh, right and i think he's made all of us laugh which sort of made the whole thing he did the same thing last year to this the, the whole wife and girlfriend joke is always uh, a good one i think <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to our next presentation, it's Credzil, uh, which is a loyalty and a reward program for on Zil. And I think so. I'm, uh, okay. So Devendra is again here pitching his second their second idea. Uh, Devendra, I think so. There is okay. Here is yes. Hi. Good to have you back, Devendra, for your Thank second you. night. Yeah. Hi. So this is our second idea, Credzil, loyalty and reward program used for using Zil. All right, Devendra, time starts, please. Yeah. So how do we make using Zil a rewarding experience? So that's the problem which we tried to address. The problem statement, multiple exchanges, multiple wallets. So in India, there are Wazirx, CoinSwitch, BitBNS and other number of wallets. There is no unified view and transaction platform. There is no loyalty and rewards for transacting. If you look at the growth of ecosystem over last two, three years, the number of users have gone up. The number of cryptocurrencies has gone up. The number of value in the ecosystem has also grown up. So all this has created system or a situation where I was reading a report India has seen in uh, Akshay's report itself, the number of users in India has grown five times over last five months. Now, lots of these new users find themselves like Alice in Wonderland, wondering where to go, what to do where to invest, how to invest, and so on. So that's where Credzil is providing a solution. It would help you to track your crypto investments, including Zill, across multiple wallets, multiple exchanges. You get coins, points for transacting through the app. You use these coins to claim rewards. You get access to curated products and services experiences at special prices. We would be offering subscriptions, digital products. You use these coins to participate in games, raffles to win exclusive rewards and cashbacks. So this is the solution we are proposing. If you are on our platform to manage your crypto investments, we reward you for using our invest uh, for using our platform. The revenues, advertisements, transaction commissions, paid promotions, consolidation of transactions and arbitrage opportunities. The team, Anup, Pina and Devin. Thank you and questions. So this token that you're creating, is that sort of a token in a closed system while it may be some form of, you know, using Zillicon read the covers for transaction processing but is this like a token that you use in the the ecosystem that you're creating or it's a token that that would be able to be used outside of the of you know of that ecosystem and second question i want to follow up is that i think there are hundreds and hundreds of solutions who are trying to solve this problem uh, in the sense of providing a singular pane of glass figuring out the ability for you to be able to do this whole notion of you know figuring out the crypto investments providing analytics around it. So how are you unique from um, you know, many of the incumbents who are already in the space? Maybe not on Zilliqa's platform yet, but on ETH and PDC and trying to amalgamate the bigger ecosystem of, of crypto. So we were looking or focusing on Zill ecosystem. That's one limitation. Okay. We were looking at the gaps in the Zilliqa ecosystem. So that's where we could envisage this kind of solution. So that's one. And second, Tokens, I'm not clear what you are asking about tokens on this platform. So we are more you're creating, into... You're creating some token that 
there's a reward mechanism for people to use your no, platform. those are not tokens those are like points okay got it okay so we give you like if you do 100 zills transactions we give you 100 points 100 credit okay. uh, zill points so it's not token it's simply a point based system like your credit card points and we keep on accumulating these points and then we see how do we incentivize or how do we monetize those points for you got it okay thanks Any other just to give, yeah, just to give an um, you know uh, sort of idea about this, check out this startup called FanPay, right? Uh, another YC startup. I know the uh, guys directly. Um, you know, so I think one interesting thing that they've done with giving these free points uh, is that they offer curated you know content on top of their platform, which go to only their point. Uh, uh sort of members right and they have this okay. amazing way of keeping these uh, offers engaging right so i think if you could just look at their instagram you don't need to get involved in the ecosystem but you will be able to still see how they're you know getting these one-offs which you would not ever think of right the, i mean sure. credit card companies never thought of such uh engaging offerings that they are giving to their members realizing that all of their members are millennials right so i, I think you know definitely something that you could learn from there Sure. We look up. So, uh, so you know, I'm just making a comment here, uh, very similar to what Akshay mentioned, uh, is that I've looked at you know multiple such models, uh, <coughs> and I think the most successful models are the ones which have been able to create a tangible uh, traction and a yeah. top line and a bottom line with, let's say, one of the pathways. For example, let's say maybe having games uh, and and then creating a point system as a layer on top of it and then creating a blockchain uh, as a third step as a phase three and yeah. i've seen uh, enough which has started with blockchain as a starting point and uh, faced resistance in terms of creating a marketplace and uh, because because you know once you get into this whole blockchain space then uh, the kind of community that you build and the kind of economics that that you know sort of lure the community and the actual users are totally different at times Okay. One comment that I have is um, you mentioned, I think, in the first or second slide that there are no reward programs for using the exchanges. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, right, uh, many of the exchanges out there, they provide you tokens and they have their own tokens. And if you hold those tokens or buy those tokens, you get certain discount in trading fees and, and other things. So in a way that exists, what you're providing is more like a, an aggregated service that allows you to get across different uh, different exchanges and different services. Yeah, that's the idea. Single unified view to look at your investments. Any other questions, judges? All right. Thank you, Thank you Devendra. Thank you. Devendra, just say hi to your child for us. I mean, it's just refreshing to hear that. So sorry. No, 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 no. That's enjoy. That's genuine enjoyment. So just say so hi to. Four or five kids. It's not only my child. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. It's a house full of four or five kids, and very hard to push them out. Keep pushing them out. So sorry. So, so pleasantly to all the children. I think you did. You need to give them, uh, you know, chocolates from our side. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they are the ones having real fun, I think. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Devendra. Uh, so our next uh, presentation is Zil Pool, and we have Amit who is coming to present it. Hi, Amit. Hi, Manav. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, right. Hello. Should I start? Yeah, yeah, you can start. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, hello, panel members. Uh, before I start and get deeper into this uh, pitch, uh, I would like to ask a small rhetorical question uh, that is, 
what if a 25 year old uh, 25 just graduate guy who is 24 years old gets uh, gets a pocket money of uh, uh, let's say uh, let's say 2 uh, 5000 bucks okay every month so what is what is his uh, basic uh, psych, uh, uh, basic uh, you know uh, what is his basic instinct to where, where does he wants to spend the money so up until now people up, up until now just before the covid uh, people wanted to spend money they wanted to go bars they wanted to buy things but right now since uh, since this covid happened a lot of lockdown is happening and you know this is going to uh, this is going to continue forward so a lot of money that has been saved uh, is 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 just lying uh, lying still so what uh, what uh, are we trying to bring with zilpool is uh, that money that is lying stagnating on your wallet uh, can be utilized uh, among your peer groups you can form peer groups and you can uh, invest those money uh, for a period of let's say 90 days or 180 days uh, in that way you can earn a lot of interest on it so this is the basic idea of zilpool moving forward this uh, our mission of zilpool is adoption of crypto as a financial instrument for the next billion users so why adoption uh, because still crypto is a questionable market a lot of speculation is happening so more and more people jump into the crypto ship uh, i think uh, more and more it will gain momentum and more and more uh, trust will be established in the crypto world so what best way what better way to target users who are just lying around with stagnating money in their wallets so this is this is for the millennials so you have you you just got to diversify your financial assets for a greater rate rate of interest that is you get higher rewards you get faster returns within 90 days or 180 days uh, with a minimum guaranteed apy and it is just built for the millennials so what is this opportunity uh, we have almost 823 billion dollar crypto market uh, out of which bitcoin is just a store of value so it uh, it uh, it consists of 42% of the market and rest of it consists of altcoins that is 58% with zilliqa also taking part in this so yeah uh, uh, coming to the zilliqa ecosystem we have 33% of total value locked in defi for staking just in the zilliqa ecosystem and we can have a 2.4 billion dollar serviceable market opportunity so this is a great good opportunity here and how does it work okay all this all this first but how does it work so what you do is that uh, that money that is uh, the, in your wallet you buy uh, tokens from the uh, you, you buy zilliqa tokens and then you join a staking group and that staking group is available uh, is just an interface from telegram or whatsapp you can just call your peers or we can uh, we can use our ai or machine learning tool to actually uh, you know to, uh, to actually match you with a similar kind of uh, group where there is a empty slot so you do a staking for 90 to 180 days and if you win the lottery you get the principal amount and the interest made from it interest made from staking all of the group members so what if it doesn't what if i don't win since you uh, for example if you say uh, if i say that you have staked uh, around 500 zil tokens uh but you uh, you were not able to you were not able to win so you get your principal amount back and the person who wins within the group from a group of 6 gets his principal amount plus the interest of all the 6 members so this is how it works so if, when we did some user research we found that there are 74 million unique wallet address around the world uh from which 1.1 million addresses are on the zilliqa platform out of which 92000 unique wallet addresses are found on zilliqa staking only so to get started with i think this is a good uh, this is a good point to get started so what are, what what will be our revenue streams so we get the staking fees from the individual users uh, when it, when a person stakes uh, for the first time we get we charge some uh, very minute amount of fees and and for the fees uh, from projects onboarded on zilpool so uh, basically zilpool is a two way platform where uh, where many other uh, uh, projects crypto projects can also uh, bring their tokens and uh, you know pu put it uh, put it on the uh, put it on our platform so uh, when you buy zil tokens you can actually you can actually diversify all those tokens in that platform uh, 
So what is the product journey? So I am sorry, Amit. I'll have to stop you there. You have exceeded the time. All right. Let's move on to questions. So this is our team, and thank you. Yeah, I was just about to finish. All right. Okay. Thank you. Judges, any questions? So, so I think you know, just a quick question, right? And I think there are a lot of financial innovation happening, and I think. What you presented, if I understand this right, um, correct me if I'm wrong as well. I mean, is you're amalgamating uh, the concept of deposits and lending and staking, and pooling that in a fashion which sort of rewards the community, but also rewards the law capital. Uh, and this combination of these things happening, whether it's happening in isolation or happening in the other ecosystem, is is there where you're heading with this? Like you have a common pool, and that pool sort of has the distribution mechanism for saving. Staking and 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 rewarding the ability for you to pull the assets. Exactly. So the the uh, the bird's eye view of this is uh, you you deposit you deposit your um, uh, some amount of money every month in 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 the wallet, and automatically it uh, it triggers you to a uh, staking group, and it says that yeah, ninety days are there, and then you you stake one token. That is, you buy some Zilliqa tokens. Out of that money, and with that Zilliqa tokens, you can also stake uh, on. Uh, you can also stake on Zilliqa as well as some other projects which are related to Zilliqa. I mean, with one token, you can actually diversify your assets. But not the same token. Yeah, I mean, uh, at the, at the end of the day, when you win, you are getting profit from all all the tokens. Uh, for example, uh, let's say you Awe. Zilika and uh, some other projects, some other good projects, three to four projects come into the play. Uh, with you just bought Zilika tokens, but with that Zilika tokens, you can uh, buy uh, other tokens as well, and you can reap the benefits at the end of the staking period. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Would this be similar to pool together? Uh, I don't have a clear idea on pool together, but uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, sure. there is no, no loss. Uh, uh, sorry, Akshay, for that. Uh, no, 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 completely fine. I mean, I mean it's, there are so many startups, so much of innovation happen, happening. So sometimes you, uh, you know, you can't keep track. But I think it's very similar. Just look it out, pull together. Yes, I, I'll have a look at it. Uh, the whole purpose is that you, uh, that money that you, that is there in your wallet is not going anywhere. It will come back to you. If it is five thousand bucks, you'll get five thousand bucks. Maybe after ninety days. But uh, that is the worst case scenario. But in the best case scenario, you might get up to fifteen thousand, like with with a minimum guaranteed APY. Yeah. So Abhay has just commented about how it sounds like a clue. So, so how it seems like something like a chit fund, uh, right? So I mean, I think he's also said some some word like smatta satta or some some local product that's there, but. I mean, uh, I think you definitely something that would relate to an audience. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, let's call it matka satta, or or you can call it chit fund, or you can call it kitties, anything which is related to money and it is taking your money and giving you good returns. Uh, I mean, that is that is a pro profitable business, right? I mean, absolutely. And uh, so, Amit only. Maybe I'm just you know sharing my comment you know here would be that I don't think a, a diversification is a linear model. It will it requires dynamic rebalancing. So there'll be closed loops, a lot of closed loops, and a lot of you know things which are uh, determined determined by the market conditions, by the individual asset situations. So I think you may like to consider you know going back to the drawing board and seeing uh, how you want to look at the uh, whole cycle of diversification. Ah uh, yes, Pranam. Sure, sure thing. I'll note it. This I'll note this down and I'll work on it. Yep. Any other questions, Ajay? All right. Thank you, Amit. Yeah. Thank you, Manav. Thank you. So moving on to our our next idea, Invoizo, and we have Ishwanath. Uh, coming here to you know present the idea. Hey Vishwanath. Hey Manav. Hi everyone. This is Vishwanath. All right. Vishwanath, I'd like to share. 
Hello. Hi, Akshay. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, not yet. I think so. They just will take a couple of minutes. We are experienced with Guru. Yes, now we can see it. Are you Perfect. ready, Vishwanath? So, um, hello, everyone. Um, we are from uh, Team Simplify. So, myself and Sai uh, on the call. So, we have built uh, an Invoizo uh, platform, which is a supply chain finance traditional blockchain or permission blockchain. And we want to now uh, make it much more decentralized, uh, powered by Zilliqa. So, what we are, uh, what is the idea is uh, that you know, in the fiat system of uh, supply chain finance, there is a heavy money movement uh, for every invoices, you know, which are having a pre-usance. A pre-usance is nothing but a time period of 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. So uh, when a lender issues the capital, uh, you know, at a interest rate, the uh, transaction cost is very high, and the general problem is capital. I, I think we're not seeing yes. your slides. Hello. Well, I think we lost your slides. Yeah, I Sorry? think probably bandwidth is, a, is an issue, which we're not on your end. I'll probably try to switch off my video. Maybe that helps. Yeah, maybe I'll also do that. Hopefully, you can see my screen now. <laughs> yes, yes, I think that works. Perfect. Uh, is my voice clear? I'm sorry for the issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's perfect. Perfect. So, uh, so there is a lot of capital locking issue um, in the current centralized financial system. So that is where uh, we came up with, uh, you know, uh, to resolve this uh, hugely underfinanced segment uh, of SME financing or supply chain finance financing. Uh, to avoid fraud and also risks uh, in the trade. Uh, so to, to avoid the duplicate bills by putting this on a decentralized ecosystem. So what this decentralized ecosystem is all about is, uh, you know, to have uh, the sellers or suppliers put their invoices on the Invoizo platform and we tokenize them. We create the NFTs uh, and then, you know, put it into a pool. So this actually creates autonomous lending agreements and smart contracts will trigger, uh, you know, the payouts. So this provides a trustworthy ecosystem uh, so that we one can securely lend and borrow digital ass I mean, uh, assets. So let me just give you a holistic understanding of the workflow. Whenever a borrower, uh, you know, puts his invoice and the lenders, there will be a pool of lenders and there will be liquidity that would be provided in a pool. And as and when the invoice comes and we tokenize it, we actually uh, you know, look at also the onboarding before uh, the borrowers. So we have credit worthiness checks and all the pre-checks that are done. And there is a collateral that is actually stored to trigger this loan contract and issue the um, you know, tokens to the borrowers. So, and then there will be a return of the payment at a percentage. Now, uh, if you look at our ecosystem, we have token holders, lenders, and borrowers. And in future, we will also like to add if anybody is providing an insurance also for that particular collateral. So uh, we have a, a scoring mechanism, which is covered by AI, and then the digital assets, which are the NFTs and the ZIL tokens, which are uh, the, uh, you know, cash flow within the ecosystem. So both the borrower and the lender would interact with the dApps which we have uh, put on the Zilliqa blockchain. So uh, we actually have the transaction fees and the interest fees calculated on the smart contract as in when a class of borrower, we know what is the risk that is involved. So based on that, we will actually trigger the in in interest rates. So having said this, let me just quickly take you through sorry uh, the uh, the demo. So this is the um, you know the buyer side. I mean the the person who is actually sending. I mean putting the invoices on the platform. So um, I log in. 
once I log in, uh, I would actually go on to my earnings. So there is also an aid component in here for the people who are actually investing in crypto pool. So now um, I would actually put my invoices. So as of now, these are my this is my portfolio. This is my discounts which I have received. So that means you know 2,090 Zill value of invoices are discounted, and some of them are in progress. And let me just just go with an invoice that I have published right now. So uh, for the invoice one two five four which I published, uh, the pool has already given me 75 percentage of the invoice value. 25 percentage is pending. I can decide to move on uh, uh, with this, and you know uh, I can actually go ahead and then start my working capital uh, fulfillment of the sale. So this is how we would actually cover the fulfillment of a invoice that is published on the platform. So that's where the Invoizo as a platform will fulfill the supply chain finance need of any SME seamlessly on a decentralized platform. And because Zilliqa is known for its scalability and performance, um, uh, so that will actually give us an edge to process the transactions much more faster than the Ethereum. So that's about it. Now I look forward for any questions and uh, you know uh, discussions around this. Hi, um, this is Richard. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. I think the uh, business model is quite straightforward for most of DeFi uh, protocol. So, but uh, you also mentioned that you want to highlight the uh, supply chain finance to support the uh, invoice issue. So, do you have ever already engaged any uh, enterprise uh, business institu institution in India and try to uh, to make sure your 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 solution is market proven by them? Yes. Yeah, Richard. So the solution is already market ready and we are already doing with fiat. As of now, the blockchain that we are leveraging is, uh, you know, Hyperledger fabric. But, you know, in India, we were unable to process the tokenized assets. So that is where we are offering this market in Southeast Asia with tokenized assets. So we are almost processing about one CR INR in revenue, uh, uh, you know, overall uh, the lending, which we are actually doing per month. Okay. A comment that I have, uh, this one up, I think it's, it doesn't surprise me that you have, you have some tangible numbers already yeah. because I have, I have seen some products um, very similar to what you're doing uh, in Singapore. And I've seen people wanting to have small and medium enterprises wanting to have capital, which is very difficult to get. So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that you, it, 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 it has a market fit. Um, so, uh, I mean, I don't have any questions, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I have seen a few, few ideas in, in Southeast Asia, which, uh, which people are yeah. definitely trying to push. And, and to, to your point, um, also, you know, uh, I'd like to make one comment is whenever you take a trade logistics and, and supply chain, combine that with finance, uh, there's generally an interesting dichotomy where the cost of compliance goes up for the entire network only because you're trying to bring a banking system on the network. Yeah. So I think historically what has happened is they've kept the two swim lanes separate and figured out a mechanism to bridge the gap, whether you're looking at an information bridging or looking at a token bridging model. Yeah. So just keep, that, just keep that in mind as you're building these things because it's nothing to do with tech at that point. It becomes the cost of compliance is just way too high for banking system as it, as it you know, you know, when compared to logistic systems. Uh, I completely agree with that, Nitin. And because, you know, we while doing an onboarding, we do a credit check. So the cost of compliance is definitely there. But, you know, we are unplugging or decoupling this with the traditional banking system. Because when we go with completely a uh, banking model, uh, you know, it really, the, I mean, the tokenized assets at times might not be acceptable by other economies. But, you know, in Singapore, yes, they are allowed. Thank you. Any other questions? Of no, I think there's a question that we should probably take from the audience. All right. If, if you have time. Yeah, we can take one question. Uh, okay, so how are the invoices validated? And more importantly, how do you avoid double financing? Yeah, absolutely. So double financing, uh, as long as the asset or the invoice is qualified on, uh, on, on, on this blockchain, it is available for auditing across uh, the blockchain. So that helps us, uh, helps the other financial institutes to plug into this and then validate whether this invoice is financed. That is point number one. Second thing is that before even onboarding the customer, we have a due diligence that we actually do. 
So that means what the business is all about. And we actually look at uh, scoring the business rather than, you know, scoring the individual itself. So that is how the borrowing mechanism will work. So, you know, based on the jurisdiction, we have this parameters where we check the credit worthiness of the particular customer. So that is the start point. So that is how we avoid more delinquency into the supply chain. Akshay, we can't hear you. Um, no, Akshay, we can't. So Ankita is asking about any regulatory body involved in India context. So on the conventional fiat perspective, yes, there is, uh, you know, there is the regulation is pretty straightforward. We do not have any issue. But when we are tokenizing the asset, there are definitely complexities around it. So we are not doing the tokenization part of it in India. Uh, sorry, Akshay, uh, please go on. I think uh, okay, Akshay might have to. Akshay, you're on mute. Yeah, I was just trying to fix my mic to the software. So I was just thinking, Vishwanath, you know, there is there is this early traction in terms of or early trend in terms of crypto products serving crypto customers, right? And that's yeah. that's sort of taking up now that the industry is also sort of uh, growing. Do you think you can act as lender, uh, you know, as a lender to crypto uh, projects so for you know this one unique problem that i've come across with my friends in the crypto space is that you know you know not all cryptocurrencies do well right and in a lot of cases you have to you know shed away some of those cryptocurrencies to get working capital and sponsor work from uh, you know uh, for your own uh, protocol if you if you take away you know, your own tokens and if you sell that to the market, then it just becomes like a you know downward spiral to zero for your price, right? And if if you could sustain uh, the price in a way wherein you're taking loans from uh, you know a lender like yourself for the crypto startup, it could be very useful, right? Think of you know sort of tokens that are probably you know in the bottom range. I think that those could be customers that you could lend to. I'm not sure if, if you know this is very relevant, but that's just some thought that I was thinking. No, it, it is perfectly relevant. So again, in the investors also, there are high risk investors and no, no risk investors. For the no risk investors, we are going to convert this into a stable coin. But for the high risk investors, we are going to provide them interest rate plus yield. But if the yield goes negative, Yes, because, you know, the investment is subject to market risk. So we actually use that caveat to say that, hey, you know, you have you are in a high risk zone. But, you know, if you are really putting it into a, a not I mean, non stable coin or, you know, maybe a, a NFT token or, you know, a Zill coin at this moment, if the price vacillates on the positive side, there is also an yield that would actually get added to your interest rate factor. So which is a potential gain. So that's why when the investor we are onboarding, we are going to classify whether he wants to do it in the stable currencies. Uh, maybe you can get, we, we go with USDT or you go ahead with Zill coins or, you know, maybe any other cryptocurrency that has an investment pool. So that is the uh, strategy which we are going to go with. All right. Thank you, Vishwanath. Uh, all right. Let's move on to our second last pitch. Uh, we have Zil Kino uh, coming in and Achiket is presenting that idea. Hello. And Achiket. Hello. Uh, can you hear Achiket? Uh, yes, Manu. Yes. Uh, yes, you are able to move. Sorry, I'm having some issues with the mic. That's okay. Can you please share your screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes, your screen is visible now. It's loading. So it's, yes, it's visible now. 
So hello everyone. Hi. So I'm Lexi and today I'll be presenting our presenting our crypto gaming platform in Sato Crypto Game. So the idea is to do a browsing for crypto games for the sake of blockchain. So our mission is to create a centralized gaming platform. The game results are verified by anybody and to eliminate the dependencies of centralized entities in online games. So the game will develop the first in this game. This game is like a lottery game where the player has to select 10 numbers and a new lottery round is created after every 15 minutes. So after the lottery round, numbers are drawn based on uh, current block number and block that will select the block team. Uh, in this way, the results are completely fair. fair. So, uh, uh, players can verify the result using the block hash of the current block. So, the results are played in green based on the matching numbers between the result and the players that are played. So, roadmap is to deploy the game on the testnet by the middle of July and followed by deploying on mainnet by the end of the July. So, we are planning to add uh, more games on the uh, platform by the end of this year. The current games that we are working on is uh, fantasy cricket, fantasy stocks, and fantasy football. So I'll start with the demo. So game is live on the live on the testnet right now. But since uh, one second, uh, one second is is it just me or my voice is not perfectly audible? It's it's. I think it's for the board. I think. Uh, so the testnet is down right now. So I. Uh, yeah. Could we let the game Sorry, uh, we're not able to hear Nachi properly. Sorry, uh, you might have to uh, check your mic status. Can you can you repeat a couple of slides, please? Because I think I lost some credible information. Uh, I can't hear you. Uh, Nachiket, let's have you again uh, back. I think so. Yeah. There's an audio issue. Let's refresh and we can have you back again. Yeah, probably at the end, Mark. Yeah. All right. So the next uh, idea is connects, and we have Jayesh coming in to present. All right. Great. Yes. Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, audible? Yeah. Okay. Hi Jayesh. Hi. I don't know. Hi everyone. I'll just a sec. I'll share my screen. Uh, it's my okay. Yeah, screen is visible, Jayesh. Right. Okay. Uh, should I start? Yes, you can start. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I will be talking about Connects, a social token-based platform. So our mission is to empower uh, people to build their own economics, the people being the creators here. So question is why? So uh, content creators earn from ad revenue that uh, content generate on a platform, but large chunk of that revenue is taken by the platform itself. For example, YouTube took 45% um, of ad revenue uh, in 2019. Also, with new ad blockers, these revenues are only plummeting. So what can be done? Social tokens can be used, which will derive the value by creators' community engagement. So how it works? Broadly targeting um, three things here. Uh, first, we provide platform to easily create social tokens. Second, we provide tools for uh, minting NFT and trading it. And third, additional tools for empowering uh, these creators for better community engagement, like Discord bot for gated community, token airdrop, etc. Um, for validation, uh, one existing example of social token is uh, GG Strike Coin on Rally Network, which empowers um, community with several abilities, such as um, private chats, um, voting on important decisions, merge pre sales. And this engagement also generates the value of coin. For example, the coin is listed at about 0.3 USD, and it went to an all-time high of 51 USD, and currently trading at about $23. So um, utility of these social tokens. 
these social tokens can be used to get uh, limited edition merchandise uh, maybe join exclusive communities on uh, discord servers and make key governance decisions such as uh, future content uh, of a creator and um, now talking about discord bot uh, it can be used to create an um, exclusive channel or discord server with community members holding a specific amount of tokens allowed in the channels and interact uh, following is the user flow for existing implementation where user can create um, social tokens uh, mint nft and view them in the marketplace so um, how do we earn we earn from commissions earned by token exchange on platforms dex fee on sale or transfer of nft um, fee on various micro transaction of discord bot and uh, codes for helping influencer understand token economics so uh, this is our team myself jayesh uh, himanshu and um, sai so uh, i'll be showing our uh, work what we have done right now so uh, this is our landing page which we have uh, talking about the social nfts uh, and how the zelika and our team so we have got majorly three things where one platform is to create token so a user can uh, mention the token name the symbol of the token uh, the amount of token they want to uh, create uh, at start and the decimal value of which the token is allowed uh, second is the mint nft here user can uh, mention the name and description and upload a uh, image which can be minted as nft uh, which will be uh, uploaded on the uh, ipfs and once the user creates the create nft uh, confirmation takes about 30 seconds so uh, sometimes it takes time so i already have done it here so you get a status here which is the nft token minted with the uh, link to the view block on devx and uh, so if we go to the devx it says a success true and user can verify from here third is the explore nft feature so here it is our marketplace which we uh, already have minted sometimes it takes time so also i have kept it open here so this is the way uh, we are showing up the nft which have been minted on our uh, contract and uh, the user uh, address or the owner of those nfts are shown here a lot of data can be added here um, but yeah this is like one of one of the implementation we have done so that's pretty much it from my side um, thank you So are you tying the token economic system to, you mentioned Discord and some of the other um, sort of, you know, social media connections. Um, is there like a tie up with that? Like, for example, what we're trying to do, at least in the enterprise space, is tie that into the various collaborative tools. Um, right. Is that the path taken here? Yes. So, I mean, uh, overall, the idea is to uh, uh, yeah, generate the economics via token economics only. So like, uh, as I was talking to have a platform tax or a uh, sale of NFT. So yeah, that is the path we are thinking to take, but, uh, given the constraint of this program, we weren't able to execute a lot of things. Perfect. And you're trying to go off of the social token space. Yes. Token space. Okay. Right. And how do you plan to make money from it? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, like basically here, uh, we are thinking initially of uh earning from the commissions from the platforms exchange the dex exchange and uh this again fee on the sale or the transaction on nft and other uh, if we have certain micro transaction on discord bots such as uh, like here we have mentioned we have tried to work on these of joining a particular uh, uh user on a particular server or a channel on a discord server or maybe some tips which are uh, creators or subscriber passing between themselves so we can earn on that part and definitely we can uh, uh, have cohorts where uh, creators are educated about how they can uh, engage with the tools which we provide and generate that open economics all right thank you yeah. Okay. Hi, Jess. This is Richard. So uh, I, I think this is more interesting business model, right? Because you have the uh, social tokens. Try to uh, uh, try to uh, give the incentives incentives to those uh, playful users. But uh, from the demo, you only show some uh, picture. Do you think about if this uh, social token idea is good for any uh, e-commerce platform or say 
real-time video streaming platform, or you have any idea to uh, to engage those those the uh, you know the the the, the different product. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, during our ideation, we had a lot of thoughts. I mean, uh, uh, we can have certain um, uh, I mean uh, interfaces or APIs where let's say user. Uh, like watches some amount of uh, YouTube uh, video, or I mean, interact with um, uh, maybe uh, he tips uh, on super chat on YouTube for a content creator. He can earn the social token from there itself. So yeah, uh, a lot of ideas were there, but again, uh, considering the program and I mean, uh, since you were developing a lot of uh, knowledge about blockchain and Zilliqa, uh, we weren't able to implement that. But yeah, we we do have certain a uh, lot of thoughts there. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, judges? Uh, you know, my curiosity is more in terms of how do you compete? I mean, there's so many social token projects now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in regards to compete, definitely um, it, it would be um, initially to encourage uh, maybe big creators to come onto our platform. So, I mean, that is where uh, some seed funding type of thing would be required to encourage the people. But it's more like a social network, like it will. Uh, hit in the network effect once we have good amount of tools and good amount of uh, user there. But yeah, so that's what. I, I think if I'm not wrong, Amrit, there was a mentable uh, uh, that's doing something similar in the ecosystem. No, well, I mean, mintable for now, they are basically a, a, an open marketplace. Um, so what what uh, Jayesh is basically spinning is is more like an extended version of it, where it's it's there's a you know a content creator can issue tokens, and those tokens may have certain utilities like the previous one for example you, you mentioned right, and then you have a marketplace where those NFTs can be traded. So uh, it's it's not it's not mintable. It's more like an extended version of mintable. Yeah. And I mean I also wanted to like uh, so even Mushtaq was working on the various tiers of NFT. So that can also be extended further in this implementation. We are, we are already engaging with social token, the ZRC2 token. Here we can also engage with ZRC1. So yeah, that can be also extended here. We'd love to see how that transpires. I think mean, that's a way of phenomenal success for us. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Akshay. All right. Thank you, Jesh. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we again have uh, Nachiket coming to present his idea, which is Zilkino. All right. Uh, yes, he's here. Hey, Nachiket. Hi, Am I audible clearly now? Yes, you are. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for the last time. My mic was not working properly. That's okay. Can you please share your screen? No. Uh, let me know when it is visible. Mm, not yet. Is it visible? It is visible. Yes. Yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, yes. Yeah. You can start. Yeah. Hello everyone. So, I'm Dachiket, and today I'll be presenting a crypto gaming platform named Turbo Crypto Games. So, idea is to build a probably fair crypto games on Silica blockchain. So, our mission is to create a decentralized gaming platform where game results are verified by anyone and accessible to everyone, and to eliminate the dependency of centralized entities in online games. So our games developed. So our first game that we developed is uh, Zilkeno. Zilkeno is basically like a lottery game where player has to uh, wager Zil tokens and select 10 numbers. So new lottery round generate after every 15 minutes. And uh, after lottery round ends, uh, result get generated based on the current block number and block hash of Zilliqa blockchain. So in this way, uh, res results generated are completely fair and verifiable by player as it is on results are generated from block hash. So player is paid in uh, Zill based on the numbers match with the lottery result. So our roadmap is uh, to deploy the game on a public testnet by mid of July. Currently the game is uh, live, but we are in a testing phase. 
so uh, followed by deploying on a mainnet by the end of july and we are working on few other games uh, which will be released by the end of december so future games that we are working on is uh, fantasy cricket fantasy sport stocks and fantasy football so we'll start with the demo uh, just before few minutes back uh, testnet is down so there will be problem with uh, showing the demo so i'll just walk around with the screenshots so basically this is the game uh, game front end uh, on the right side it shows the lot result of uh, last four results last four rounds followed by the timer uh, which shows the lottery round and uh, the lottery time uh, also the player has to say, uh, there are some information regarding the game details like probably fair and how to play the games and uh, if the player has some doubts regarding the game whether the game is compromised or result generated are not fair so player can verify the result using the block hash using this uh, selecting the verify result uh, part so then uh, player has to select the 10 numbers out of this 36 numbers and uh, place the bet amount uh, to which he has to play so, so this is basically the screenshot uh, where you show the lottery round which is ending in 1 minute 16 seconds and the lottery round current round is 6 and uh, once the player has uh, selected the numbers uh, it will show in the uh, golden circles and uh, once the place bet has been placed uh, the result will be generated uh, and it will be shown in a golden colors uh, so from here it will show that uh, five numbers get matched uh, with the result so user will get uh, 3.30 times of what he what place what he plays the bet so yeah that's it we are open for questions I had one question. Again, I'm not very familiar with um, some of the fantasy sports and the features that they have. Um, but what, where is the, what's the role of randomness? Again, you can always insert randomness in many ways. But what's the role of randomness in some of those uh, fantasy sports and gaming abilities? Uh, actually, it's not random in this game. Uh, in this game. As, it, as it is probably fair, so uh, the result should be uh, verifiable. So using random numbers, we cannot oh, verify the results. Okay, so it's, it's just that it, it goes through a certain logic and you just want to yeah. verify that the logic is correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that the players can verify that the, our site is uh, completely fair and results are generated can be verified using block hash. Yeah, so, uh, Amrit, this is just kind of like, you know, if you go out in a casino, yeah, I think if whenever I've played any game, I've felt like, you know, it's just everything's, you know, been done uh, apart from the mathematics. It's also been done to, you know, rip me off, right? It's uh, some sort of magnet or something is sort of put uh, beneath the roulette machine to take away my money. It, that's how it feels like, right? So I think that's where this comes in, where in fair in the digital world is sort of proven by blockchain. Okay. Just, just one comment that I had was, uh, I think in one of your slides you mentioned about using some of the block numbers and uh, yeah. block hashes uh, as as source of randomness. Just, yeah. just for information, these are not very secure ways of generating randomness because it's very easy to influence those numbers uh, through coercion. So, just, just something that uh, actually, it's uh, it considering the future block. I mean. So, for example, if a person press a bet at a, a second block number, so the result will be generated based on third block number. So, I mean, oh. I see. So, it's not uh, okay. So, you're not using it for for randomness at all. No, uh, it's using just a block hash and some uh, open source code that have been placed, so anyone can verify it and it generates the random. Uh, it generates the number. So, Got it's it. not random. Got it. Any other any other questions, judges? Thanks, Nachiket. All right, thank you, Nachiket. I really like your UI as well. It's very, it's very clean. Thanks, Nachiket. All right. Uh, so, guys, stay tuned. Uh, we will just quickly go end this session and finalize uh, who the winners are. And till then, uh, thank you. So, stay tuned. We'll be announcing the winners very shortly.